Welcome to the project. This project is about containerization. We are going to see in this project how we can containerize an existing application. But first I will talk about when you should really start containerizing or when you should use any container technology. What are the real use cases for that? And I'll also inspire you based on the statistics that we have in the current market. So let's understand the scenario first. So let's say you have a multi-tier application stack or you have many, many services in an application stack that you manage as an operations team or as DevOps team. And these services are running on VM. It could be VMs of the VMware environment or it could be cloud environment like EC2 instances on AWS cloud or it could be you're running on physical machines in your own data center. Point is you're running it on operating systems. And as today's trend agile, we need to do continuous deployment for any changes or not any changes, many changes. And there are continuous changes in today's time and we continuously do the, we continuously, continuously need to do the deployments. Okay, let's see problems with this scenario. Okay, first is we have to spend a lot of money. We have to either procure the resource or even if you're doing it on cloud platform, this regular operational expenditure, you have regular bills you have. And it's not just about uh, spending. Are we really re using all those resources or not? If you're running, let's say, an application service or a web service, and it is having 10 GB of RAM, is it really using 10 GB of RAM, RAM like overall? Or if you take an average of an, or of an entire year, you will find out how much resource wastage is there and that resource, resource wastage is very expensive. So we are spending a lot to set up our multi-tier application stack. Also when we are doing deployments, there are always chance of making human errors. Automation can save that a lot but then again, you would be having different kinds of environment, dev, QA, staging, production, and they will be having different, different versions, different, diff they would not be in sync. And the time study of microservice architecture, if you want to use microservice ar architecture and implement on OSS directly running on the virtual machine, then you will end up spending a lot of money because in microservice, you have multiple sub stack in a stack. And the point is, we are not using all that resources. Mostly there'll be resource wastages. Also our environments are not in sinks and that because of that reason our application is not portable. If, if it works on dev, there are chances it will fail on QA environment. If it works on QA, there are chances it may fail on production environment. Containers are really the solution that we are looking for. If you can containerize an application, then you can save a lot of money because containers uses very less resource because there are no operating systems in that. And if you're using low resources, then you can, it's very much suitable for a microservice architecture. So we don't have to spend a lot of money. In containers, deployments are done via images. So if you package your images properly with all the dependencies, all the binaries, all the libraries necessary, then if it works on your laptop, it's going to work on a QA environment. The same thing is going to be working on production environment because we have same container image across all our environments. And that should also make our stack reusable. We can use the same stack across multiple environments. It's repeatable. We can very quickly imitate our stack from production to QA or QA to production. Okay, so there are immense benefits that, that we get if you are containerizing our application. Let's see some statistics. Statics, statistics over here are to inspire you really. The 50% of the IT organization have already made half of their application containers or they containerized half of their application, you can say. And 50% today is a huge number. And 29% out of them are running it 
running containers for production. Okay, the production sites, the production applications are powered by containers. If you're a heavy cloud user, then you should know 78% of those people are using AWS platform to run their containers. If you are DevOps, then it's automatically assumed by 81% of the organization that you would be containerizing the application or managing the containers. So being DevOps, it directly affects us. So let's see the tools that we're going to use in this project to containerize our application. So we are going to use a Docker as our container runtime environment to build images and we are going to containerize our vProfile application stack. In our very first projects, where we have seen how to set up this stack on virtual machines, then we have also seen how we can run it on AWS cloud by using lift and shift and re-architecture. The same vProfile application stack, we have multiple services, Nginx, Tomcat, MySQL, Memcache, RabbitMQ, so this is the existing application. We are going to containerize this application and run on Docker containers. When I say Docker as a tool, we are not going to just use the Docker engine. There will be Docker Compose and Docker Hub as well to host our images. Let's see the steps that we are going to take. So you should be aware about the steps to set up our vProfile stack. And for that, you can go and check again our first project where we are setting up vProfile application manually on virtual machines. Once we know that, then we'll find the right base images from Docker Hub for all the services that we're using, Nginx, Tomcat, MySQL, Memcache, RabbitMQ. Once we find the right base image, then we are going to write a Docker file for the services that we need customization. Like for example, Tomcat, we're going to deploy our artifact inside that. So that needs customization. Nginx, we need some our own configuration changes. Or MySQL, we need to have our own data, our own table, our own schema. So we'll figure out which service we need customization and we're gonna write Docker file for it. And with that, we're gonna build the image then. Once we have the image ready, we're going to use Docker to test all our containers. So we have a multi-container environment. We have Nginx, Tomcat, Memcache, RabbitMQ, MySQL. So we're gonna write a Docker Compose file which will launch all these containers together from the image that we have built. Once we have that, we're gonna test it. If it checks, if everything checks out fine, then we are going to host our images on Docker Hub. So we'll push our images on Docker Hub. Okay, then let's get started. Let's do containerization using Docker. But before that, let's see the architectural design. So first we are going to fetch in our source code from our Git repository. And we're going to do the entire Docker workflow. First, we're going to write Docker file for the services that needs customization. So we have Nginx, Tomcat and MySQL. So we have to write three Docker files. Once we have written Docker file in our source code, then we are going to use a Docker build command which will get executed on our Docker engine. In our Docker file, we should have mentioned the base image. This base images will be pulled from Docker Hub. So Tomcat, Nginx and MySQL, these are three images that we are going to pull and customize them. So Docker build command is going to read the Docker file, build our image. Once our images are ready, we're going to use a Docker compose. We'll mention all the containers with the images and then we're going to test it. Once it checks out fine, then we're going to push our Docker images, the customized Docker images to Docker Hub in our own account. So that's the entire Docker workflow that we are going to do. To do this, you should have basic understanding of what is a container, what is Docker, how it works, and you should have some hands-on experience with Docker, like how to run a Docker container and very, very basic things of Docker's. So if you're done here, join me in the exercise.